the 34th time. For the next hour or so, your ears will be invaded by all things football. From Africa to South Africa to Europe to pretty much anywhere that this beautiful game of ours does touch and cover, we're going to be touching on some of the headline moments that have transpired over the past week in, I guess, the globe as far as the game is concerned. Of course, on the African continent, it was a big week this past week where we saw the AFCON draw for 2019. All 24 teams know exactly who they'll be facing and who stands between themselves. And the knockout stages come AFCON 2019. Before we get too deep, I'm Loazi Zikubu. I'm Kolo Makwaza in, as usual, like Patrick Vieira and Ray Keane. <laughs> and, uh, well, there's no Yumika right now. Uh, probably still celebrating his uh, victory uh, or Liverpool's victory over Chelsea. We'll be touching on that a little later as well. But we simply have to start with the big story of the past couple of days on the African continent, the AFCON draw for 2019. And either way, Kola, Bafana Bafana in part three, they were always going to get a tough draw. And it's pretty much what they got. Yeah, it's going to be a tough, you know, um, sort of group for Bafana to come out of Group D. I mean, you've got Morocco in there and Ivory Coast mm. and, uh, you know, you've got our neighbours in Namibia. I'm sure, you know, the government can sort of, they can sort of sort out that clash and probably <laughs> promise them something if they let us so you know, three, a, give us three just points. Just give us the three points. Yeah, we're yeah. neighbours, man. Well, I'm sure we'll, we can sort that out diplomatically. But um, as far as the other two teams go, Ivory Coast and Morocco, look... You know, Ivory Coast, let's face it, they are, I would say, perennial contenders because mm-hmm. they've had, you know, quality players. You know, the Drogba's, the Torres. A lot of people are saying know, the they're past, not so. quite the same team or don't quite have the same players that they maybe did have five years ago. Your thoughts on that? You know, they probably don't. But, you know, Ivory, Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast is one of those countries where somehow they always have talent. Yeah. You know, irrespective of whether, you know, like I said, the Torres and the Drogba's, you know, are no longer there. They'll always always have somebody there I mean you have they've Wilfred Zaha now mm. you know so there's always a big player or a star player that's also internationally known that yeah. they always bolster in their team so that's not going to be uh, an easy one uh, for South Africa because I mean Ivory Coast like I said they're perennial contenders so you know that's going to be a tricky one but I, I don't think we fear anybody at this mm. point you know like I said we, we took four out of six points from Nigeria yep. we were undefeated in qualifying so, you know, there's nothing for us to be um, worried about on that front. But Morocco is the one that I think, you know, is going to be quite a surprise mm. because, you know, they too also have some really good players playing abroad. Uh, I mean, led by uh, Ziyech, mm-hmm. um, the guy at oh, Ajax mm. that you can see um, in the Champions League and what he's done. So that's not going to be a, an easy one. I think the Morocco one will be... Uh, more of a test, you know, for South Africa because it's funny, you know, the North African teams play a different brand of football, you know, and the Moroccan team, from what I've seen even in qualifying and even when you see their players, they play very similar to a Spanish style. Maybe it's because, you know, the distance between Morocco and Spain, but they play a a sort of Spanish style, very technical, very short passing game sort of football. Mm. And that's the sort of style that for me with Bafana, when we play teams like that, you know, we sort of struggle against those teams. But when we play the more physical side, you know, we're able to run around them and, you know, dribble them and, and, you know, just play, you know, we, we, we counter the physical style better. Whereas that technical side of the game, it's like, you know, when I remember um, when we played uh, Nigeria in Uyo, you know, they, they came with that more physical style mm. and, and, you know, they tried to, to bully to us off the park. That, but yeah. then when we started playing our soccer, we started passing it around and, you know, playing it around them. You know, we actually did quite well. So, so you think that that game, particular game is going to be a big that, that's tactical gonna be a, battle? A, a, yeah, a tactical mm. battle, more of a question mark. Yeah. But, you know, I, as I mean, far... They've got, they've got, they've got a, a, a fine coach on the African continent in Evernight as well, who yeah. is uh, chasing that that record, uh, three different titles with three different teams. Uh, so he's got plenty to play for. Yeah, definitely he's got plenty to play for. I mean, he has to go against the Ivory Coast as yeah. well. So yeah. he probably, you know, knows them more than anybody. So I think it's an interesting group for South Africa. Look, it's not the worst group, honestly. If you were to pick your worst group, which one would you point to? I tell you what, Egypt's group is not going to be easy. Yeah, that's right. True. Because uh, DR Congo, believe it or not, they have some serious players, mm. right? If they can rope them in, 
you yeah. know, from, um, you know, because they play all over the world. So if they can rope in a, a decent side, I mean, they finished third in the last AFCON, if I'm not mistaken. Third of third uh, or fourth. 2017. Yeah, I think they yes. finished third or fourth, yeah. right, in the last AFCON. So, you know, they, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you want to put it in that literal sense, they're the mm. third, fourth best mm. team in Africa, and, you know, from the last AFCON. And Zimbabwe, I think, might surprise Egypt. This is definitely Zimbabwe's you know? sort of golden generation that they yeah. currently have, and they've got a fantastic team. And <laughs> my thinking is, Game one of the whole tournament, should Zimbabwe upset Egypt? That will set the tone. Yeah. That's going to be a, a very tone. interesting tournament should that happen. And I mean, Zimbabwe, you know, they, they actually have a complete team. I mm. mean, they have good defenders. You know, you've got the likes of Kama Billiot in the mm. midfield, Katsande. Then you've got the likes of Nasha Mushekwe up mm. front. Uh, Knowledge Musona. Knowledge Musona. Yeah. So they really have firepower. I think, you know, they could really cause an upset mm. uh, in this group and possibly even top this group. And I mean, they did play... Um, uh, I think they, they did play DR Congo in one the, of the, in the qualifiers, qualifiers of, yeah. you know, yeah. so, you know, they, they're familiar with them. So, yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting group that, but uh, here's, here's, I, I, I don't think, you know, um, outside of that group, I yeah. mean, I looked at um, Senegal's group and I'm thinking, you know, Algeria, not the Algeria that they used to be and uh, Kenya, um, you know, you never know what you're going to get with Kenya. And, and I think Tanzania are going to push, but I don't think the, they have enough quality, mm. you know, collectively. And obviously, we look at our friends in Nigeria. I mean, that group, I mean, give me a break. Nigeria can put their <laughs> Olympic team there. I mean, they've got Guinea, Madagascar, and Burundi. And two of them are debutants. <sighs> yeah, mm. I think Nigeria will easily walk, you know, through that group. And uh, you look at Group E with Tunisia, Mali, Mauritania, and Angola. You fancy Mali, Tunisia, Tunisia and Mali in, there. in yeah. there. With Group F, you've got Cameroon, Ghana, Benin, and Guinea-Bissau. Cameroon, Ghana should come out of there. Mm. So... Yeah, it, it, it's not. It's it's wide open this Afcon. You yeah. know, I said it the last time when uh, Bafana uh, uh, booked their place um, for Egypt. You know, it's wide open. But you know, I think with Egypt uh, being the hosts, mm. I think that will go a long way. However, having seen, I know we're going to touch on this later, what Sundowns did in Egypt, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, if you come in with a bit of grit and you come in with a bit of fight, you know, you could walk away with a result against mm. Egypt, even though it's in Egypt. So I really don't see anybody in this AFCON that I can actually say hands-on favorites. You know, it's their title to lose. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think you could see from the seedings. Uh, I guess you had part one, which had the the, the, the five World Cup uh, um, representatives mm. plus Cameroon, the current holders. And then you had part two, where there was DR Congo, there was Ghana, there was uh, yeah. Cote d'Ivoire. And I'm thinking all those teams in those, especially those first two parts, they probably look at, at whoever they have to face and be like, well, we've yeah. got nothing to fear. We, you know, you know, we I, are as, as giant as any of the other I teams. I don't want to sound too much of a conspiracy theorist, but when I saw the parts, I was like, whoa, you know, like... They, and then there was a late change with Nigeria. Going Do you know what I mean? Like they, they, they avoided all the big teams yeah. and, you know, maybe this is also good for the tournament because I cannot, I mean, we've heard mumblings for years now about UEFA rigging, yeah. uh, you know, the Champions League groups. I mean, I personally feel the border protection thing is a bit of a rigging to mm. me because you should play whoever, irrespective of what stage it is, whether it's the last 16, whether it's the group stage, you should play whatever. But obviously they've got TV rights, interests and so forth. So I can understand that. But, mm. Yeah, it's a wide open AFCON, really wide open. I honestly cannot see anybody um, as a, a, a favorite outside of Egypt simply because they're the host mm. nation. You are listening to the Pitch Invasion podcast, the podcast for football travelists. Okay, all right. So uh, a lot to look forward to then, obviously, between now and the start of AFCON uh, with uh, I guess with players, perhaps a lot of the players who are outside looking in as far as the regular squad for the national team is concerned, they'll be trying to put their hands up between now and the end of the regular football seasons across the world. And uh, if you were to bring it home uh, to South Africa, you've got uh, a team uh, like Mamelodi Sundowns, we've mentioned them. The last time Bafana played, they had, we had about, what, five or six Sundowns players in the squad, Yeah. Uh, which, which, you know, is, is something that is fitting. I guess it's only natural that you have that many. Uh, if you look at sort of what's happening in South African football right now, there's a, a team, and uh, I guess, look, it's a team that's close to your heart, Ola, in Orlando Pirates, mm -hmm. who are finding the right type of form at the right time uh, in trying to uh, wrestle the title away from Mamelodi Sundowns. And 
a lot of people uh, maybe up until maybe three months ago had forgotten about a certain Wayne Sandilands who at 35 has come back into the frame and I remember maybe about five months ago he was playing MDC football for Orlando Pirates and yeah. a forgotten man very much he's come back and he's put in some absolutely wonderful performances between the sticks for Orlando Pirates and, and really sort of driving them forward towards this league title uh, a late, a late sort of hand uh, from him. Maybe he's putting his hand up for for the reckoning at the very least uh, to go to uh, Fcon 2019. Yeah, I mean everybody's so excited about Tiger Woods comeback. How about Wayne Sandilands comeback? Can we, <laughs> we also get a story like that? <laughs> Look, you know, um, it's interesting uh, what Wayne Sandilands has had to do to come back because you know it's criticism of his own fans as well mm. that he's had to deal with, mm. not just you know the national picture and you know often criticism from your own fans. You it's know. The is, is the worst. I mean, you can ask, um, uh, not Bakari Sanya, Arsenal defender now, he's, he's escaping me, not Lauren, Ebue. There was a point where Emmanuel Ebue was having just a terrible time and he's spoken about that. That mm. led to, you know, depression uh, while he was at Arsenal, that, mm. you know, the fans were on his case and eventually one performance sort of sparked, you know, a, a turnaround and, you know, he eventually became a fan favourite again. So I think Wayne Sanderland has, you know, hit on that same note where, you know, he's pretty much, I mean, even in the game against, um, uh, I think it was uh, FC Platinum, mm. uh, where, you know, he made some stellar saves. Yeah. The San Pirates really should have lost that game. Mm. And you look at, you know, the, the, the PSL games uh, that uh, Pirates have played where Sanders has made some good saves. Yeah. So he's definitely stuck up his hand to say, guys, don't forget me. And I mean, you look at the context of the goalkeepers in our country. I mean... Obviously, um, Darren Keith, you know, you can't chuck him out now yeah. because he also saved us, you know, to get to AFCON. You know, you look at him and then you look at Kune, who, you know... Who might still... Who, you know, at this late stage of the season, I don't know if if he were to come back, maybe let's say in, in a month uh, from injury, the yeah. season is over. Between, between then and the start of AFCON, he would have played no football for the whole year. I don't know. Do you would, would you if you were Stuart Baxter and Kune is available without playing any football for a whole year is available for for Fcon? Would you would you take him? Brazil did the same thing with Neymar going to the World yeah. Cup and they took him. I think you do the same. You think thing. you do the same? Kune is you know um, our greatest goalkeeper mm. ever. You know and why not? You know if if you've got a guy who is pound for pound the best in his position yeah. and is pivotal i mean you've seen we talk about De Gea being pivotal to man united we've yeah. seen kune being pivotal to kaiser chiefs absolutely so you know how can that guy you know lose his place because of an injury because mm. i don't think the other goalkeepers have played at kune's level for a good stretch uh, yeah. uh, in time because you know darren keith saves Bafana the one weekend, the following mm. weekend he's subbed against Pirates in a crucial league game. Yeah. So, you know, th th there seems to be, a, you know, lack of consistency. Even with Ronald Williams, I mean, he's a great goalkeeper, but I always feel that, you know, there's that, he's got a bit of that Jordan Pickford in him, you know, mm. that he will make a blind over save, but then, you know, there's a howler waiting to come. And you look at Wayne Sanderlands, you know, in the last 10 games, he's possibly been the most consistent, of, you know, of, of the goalkeeper. Yeah. So, I think you've got to take him there. I know they took uh, Vuma to mm. uh, where we played Libya, and you know that was seen as a bit of a gamble. But I mean, to compare Vuma and uh, Sandilands, it's just it's not comparable. Yeah. I mean, Sandilands has to be there, if not at least third okay, uh, so choice. Okay, so then you've got four keepers. Only three are going. You've, you've got four keepers: Kune, yeah. Keat, and um, Sandilands. Sandilands. So no Williams for you. No, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. <laughs> okay. No, it's 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 a it's quite a, an interesting uh, sort of topic that because again it's it's one that is going to go on between now and when Bafana Bafana do eventually name their squad and even beyond that because there will be question marks if you if if Sandilands doesn't make the squad for some reason the the question will be what more can anyone do to be called yeah, up to a squad? Where's the line of merit? Yeah, like, exactly. What's exactly. the yardstick to mm. say? you know, um, this player or goalkeeper yeah. can get into the squad mm. versus other players. Because that's where I think things are a bit murky when it comes to national selection, to be honest with you, especially in our country. Because, you know, I look at the goals department, for example, right? And you look at the fact that we, 
you know, we we're not we're not a goal scoring nation, mm. Bafana Bafana. Like we, we we won't roll out and put four or five past people. Yeah, we yeah. win two nil, win two one, we win one nil, right? But we're not like we, this is not Benny McCarthy, Sean Bartlett uh, days yes. anymore. Okay, and you look at our, the current crop of strikers that we have, and we actually are not playing with a renowned, apart from Lebu Mutiba, right? Who obviously is scoring he, in he, Europe. He, but he doesn't and, even have 10 caps at you his know, name. So you, he's you, still relatively new to yeah, the system. Yeah. So you, you add him in there. But outside of that, mm. the next best goal scorer is actually a midfielder, mm. right? In Percy Tau. So we actually don't have, you know, out and out strikers that are scoring goals. And again, I'm going to go back to this. I've been saying this for, I don't know how many episodes in, uh, in this podcast, you know? We slept on Chuku, right? <laughs> we didn't give him citizenship and so forth. <laughs> There's Gaston Serino mm. and, and all these other, you know, foreign nationals that are banging in goals. Nationalize these guys, give them IDs, give them passports, put them in the national team. Yeah. You can easily find a way to bypass the red tape. We see it all the time Everywhere. with our African players. Yeah. I mean, Senegal are robbed of Patrick Vieira. You name it, mm. the, the countries of this world and all the, all the players that the, Algeria with Zidane, mm. so many African players are being, you know, like they do here with the mines, you know, they come <laughs> and they excavate and they take all the diamonds and the minerals back to Europe. They've been doing that for years with the players here. And I think maybe South Africa needs to adopt that mm. and just, you know, one or two guys in, in, in key skill positions, especially up front, mm. give the goddamn passport, and you know, let's let's look at um, let's look at ways of getting him, uh, you know, into the national setup. Because I mean, I look at uh, Serena, for example. You know, that guy is a player. Mm. You know, so I think it's about time that we start thinking of the bigger picture here, especially now with you know the World Cup quali- uh, qualifying coming in line. Mm. I don't know how many years you need, you know, I think it's five years you need for permanent residency, but I know if you buy a house, you get permanent residency, <laughs> right? I'm pretty sure so Serena, all, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Serena's bought a house by now. <laughs> Safa, do the right thing. Give this guy Bafana uh, 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 colors and he'd gladly take it. Mm. You Look at Jeremy Brocky, for example, right? I'm pretty sure Jeremy Brocky any day would take Bafana over New Zealand, Yeah. right? Any day of the week. So. There's so many of these guys that we're letting go. And I'm, I'm now looking, I'm stretching it beyond, you know, now World Cup qualifying mm. and so forth. Guys like Serino, Nascimento, mm. right? There's no way that these guys are, are, are out here at, at the level that they're playing, even in CAF, yeah. right? And they're really putting in performances. Why can't we get these guys into the national setup? Why not? Mm. Every other country in the world does it. Look at Portugal. Remember Deco? Couldn't crack it for Brazil, goes to Portugal. Becomes you know what I mean? a legend. Becomes a legend. Yeah. So it happens. We need to just follow suit and do the same with a lot of our you know, foreign national players. Okay. All right. So uh, Ola is looking beyond AFCON and thinking about the World Cup qualifiers, which, uh, let's be honest, is something that we, we definitely need to think about uh, as South Africa because, you know what, it matters very little. You qualify for AFCON, you go there, let's say you do well and you get to the quarterfinals, maybe even a semi-final spot, and then you fail to make it to the World Cup. It just means you haven't really moved forward, is it? Uh, so hopefully Bafana Bafana even through this period of focusing on AFCON, uh, we'll be uh, sort of thinking about that World Cup qualification as well. Uh, as we welcome uh, Imika, top of the table, clear of Manchester City. Yeah, but uh, Man City have a game in hand. Let's not forget uh, Man that. City with a game in hand, but uh, listen, it doesn't change the picture. Hey? It doesn't change the picture, Imika. Yeah, thank, thanks a lot and, and uh, great to join you guys. Um, I think that um, game in hand is important, but I think points in hand mean a lot more. So we'll see what happens at the end of uh, at the end of the week <laughs> when when Man City has played, played uh, Tottenham and and Man United. If they if they get six points from those games. Mm-hmm then they deserve to be champions. Uh, but before we move on, uh, I mean, we're going to come back to the Premier League picture, but I want to find out from you, uh, what did you think of the performance, Liverpool against Chelsea? I, I must say that it was um, 
it was a good game, uh, you know, on, the, on both sides because you know Chelsea played really well. Mm. Um, so they made first half very, very uh, difficult. But I think Liverpool came back in the second half with a plan. And once they got that goal, um, you know, they needed a little bit of genius from from Mo Salah. Mm. And uh, what was really weird was that immediately after that, uh, Chelsea had two very good chances to bring that game back back, back and level. And, and they should have. They know, really should have. Yeah. They should have really. Mm. So. Uh, it's the kind of uh, scenario where you know where a team is is looking like destined to be champions, and you know certain things go their go their way. But I mean that was a, that, that was I mean Liverpool deserved their win, but mm-hmm. you know if, if it went uh, either way, it would still have been a fair result. Okay, all right, that's, that's a, a very good point. Uh, before we move on from that, because we have to talk about uh, Orlando Pirates and the way that they're doing in, in uh, the Absa Premiership, um, <laughs> you mentioned that goal by Salah, and uh, you, I'm sure you saw the the reactions afterwards of what um, uh, Shea Given was doing when the goal was scored, and while everyone else was celebrating, Shea Given was tucking into his food in studio, and uh, I'm seeing Ola here while you're talking, he's tucking into his food as well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yes, Orlando Pirates, top of the table. Uh, again, also clear of uh, their nearest challengers who happen to have three games in hand, not just one. But at this stage of the season, uh, you have to say, Mika, that it is advantage Orlando Pirates either way, even with Sundowns, with those three yeah, games you know, in hand. I, I- you know, I've, I've always said said that, uh, you know, the Paris are, are very well poised mm. and that they just needed to to uh, pull their, their socks and try and win the game against the Pats and, and Free States. Yeah. And, you know... Uh, okay, while well, we wait uh, for Emika to connect back with us, uh, uh, to connect back rather with us, uh, Ola, he was making a point that uh, Pirates have always, well, have been well poised Pretty much ever since they dropped out of uh, the Cav Champions League. And uh, I think we are seeing that in the way that uh, they're performing. Three wins in as many games in a space of a week has really put them very much in the pound seat. I think, you know, ever since uh, the exit in the uh, Cav Confed Cup, you know, they're now able to focus on one thing, you know, because remember, um, <clears throat> Pirates, unlike Sundowns, don't have that depth in quality. Mm. So, they have to literally put all their eggs in one basket in one mm. competition. And that means playing the strongest lineup without having to worry about, oh, resting players yeah. and so forth. So that's the advantage that they have. And I mean, credit to Mitchell because the guys are grinding out results. Look, I know against Vitz it was an own goal, mm. but you know, you, you create your own luck. If that ball doesn't come in the box perfectly, if it comes in at, at knee height, for example, yeah, that goal doesn't, doesn't go come in. in. Yeah. So you, you create your own luck. So I think at, they're at the stage now, even against Free State Stars, although, you know, they were comfortable at 2-0 and they hung on eventually, mm-hmm. but, you know, they're grinding out results. This is a stage of the season where, you know, no one's going to hand it to you. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to go out and take it. And you, you can see it now with the belief that the team have that, you know, they, I, I think you can sense that they believe that they cannot lose. Mm. Okay. It might go down to a draw, but you can see it in their performances. They cannot lose. I think in the last 10 games... Uh, that I've seen with Pirates, they have been behind a couple of times yeah. and they've gone on to, you know, overcome and win and they've gone on to draw, which shows the resilience. And like I said, with the ga- uh, with the goal against Vitz, is that, you know, you cannot say that they didn't deserve that mm. luck, you know, for them going. to go in because yeah. they kept going. Yeah, no, they did. And, uh, you know, you mentioned that resilience and it's something that Innocent Milo was actually talking about on social media a couple of days ago, uh, mentioning that even in the change room now, they're starting to feel, you know, they're starting to get that uh, that. Belief Belief that you know what we've we actually have it in our hands, and if you look at their fixtures, they lost three uh, remaining games. Yes, as difficult a fixture list as you can get in finishing off a season, especially when you're challenging for the title. But uh, you know, it, it, it's games that, especially the last two, where you've got Cape Town City and Bologna City, uh, you know in many ways can't go either way that Mansburg United game uh, later on this week is going to be extremely important for them and I say important because they're up against a team that is fast running out of of, 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 of time to survive uh, they're going to Harry Guala Stadium where Marysburg United are better than they are away from home so that's the game for me that is going to you know uh, be extremely important because now the result there affects how they play against Cape Town City away from home as well 
Yeah, I, I think that game, you know, is possibly going to be, you know, the toughest of the three. Mm. Because I think Maritzburg, you know, if they are going to go down, they want the last hurrah. And that Absolutely. would be, you know, a, a Orlando Pirates' a scalp, yeah. you know, because I think the Cape Town City Bulukwane games, I think those will just be showdowns for who might sneak into, you know, that fourth place for yeah. the CAF Confed. So th that's going to be, that's an expected showdown. Yeah. But I think the Maritzburg one could be a trap game because Maritzburg, you know, they're party spoilers and they're yeah. at that point in the season where I think mathematically you can say that, you know, Maritzburg are going to go down. You know, I think they oh, they home team. they really need like miracles from other teams, mm. never mind themselves. You know, for them to avoid relegation. And you know, what better way if you are going to go down than to say, okay, look, we went down, but you know, we stopped Orlando Pirates' mm. charge for the title, or we put a dent at least. Yeah. And I think that's what Maritzburg are going to go for. Especially and with uh, uh, one Eric Tinkler. Exactly. <laughs> <sitting>. You know. <laughs> and as far as the the Bulukwane game, you know, the final game of the season mm. at home. If Pirates do overcome, I think, sorry, that's three games, that's nine points. Mm. If Pirates can go into that game having won four points from uh, Maritzburg or, and Cape Town City, or at absolute minimum, three, three. out of six, yeah. and they go into that last game against Bulukwane City where they at know home. at home it's for the league, and I I'm telling you now, you know, yeah. um, fill up Orlando Stadium is going to be revived I was about to say and that. everybody is going to be there I and can you're going to get the same yeah. scenes that you saw with Sundowns and Al Ali yeah. except yeah. the stadium will just be black yeah. no not black people <laughs> but the color of the shirts will just be black I, I was actually I was literally about to say that well yeah I, I black people my, too I I'm sure put my, I <laughs> can put my sneaker collection on the line in saying that that game I'll be very disappointed if there's Paint one Paint Orlando seat. black if there's one seat that is available, yeah. I'll be very disappointed. And look, I'm a Chiefs fan, so uh, but I can I can I can and, and, and appreciate what a good storyline. Yeah, I can for, appreciate for, for exactly the PSL. What doing. I, mean, yeah. I, I can't think of the last time Orlando Stadium had significance in terms of the national sort of Absolutely. attention. Yes, they've yeah. had big games. They've had um, you know uh, semi final. I, th I think there was a Chiefs. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I think there was a Chiefs um, Pirates MTN8 at Orlando State. I could be wrong, right? But I think there was one there. Mm. And, and I was there at that game. I think that was where Opa Manisa beat Kune from some ridiculous... No, that was definitely FNB Stadium. Well, was that yeah, FNB yeah, Stadium? Yeah, okay. Eleven. yeah. Okay, yeah. but I think there was a, a, a Chiefs yeah. uh, Pirates game that I was there at Orlando State. I'm pretty sure of that. But the point is, what a great sort of... Um, you know, a venue, a historic venue yeah. in South African football to have another moment in its uh, pages of history yeah. where a title can be won. Because remember, Pirates, um, you know, as far as Orlando Stadium goes, you know, they've had success there. Mm. You know, they, they did win a title there before yeah. and they've won cups there. So this would just add to another page in Orlando Stadium and Orlando Pirates. It's just fitting. It's almost like, I mean, you look at Arsenal, for example, where they're saying that Arsenal haven't won a trophy at the Emirates. Mm. I mean, the FA Cups were won at Wembley. Yeah, that's so true. they're yet to win the league mm. and celebrate it at the Emirates. And I think you look at what Orlando Stadium means to Orlando Pirates, to sort of football, yeah. to have another trophy, the league won there on the final day. That just, to me, um, is a beautiful picture. Pitch Invasion is the podcast for football travelers. To contribute to the show, pose a topic of debate, or just complain about your favorite team, send us a WhatsApp voice note on plus two seven six zero nine two one six nine seven seven. That's plus two seven six zero nine two one six nine seven seven. Or send us a text message starting with hashtag pitch invasion. Remember to follow the Pitch Invasion podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the username Pitch Invaded. Speaking of 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 a a picture, uh, now here's a scenario though. We've got okay, we've got Mamelodi Sundowns with three games in hand. We still don't know what's going to happen with the whole uh, uh, appeal thing. Um, Pirates are going to be playing these games. They've got nothing else to play for. Sundowns have now have three games in about nine days. I think that they're going to have to play in catching up. You know, so, I think there was something that I looked at. Uh, I think it was this past weekend hmm. where. I was saying to myself, why didn't Sundowns play the midweek game? Because... As in, said, as in this mid midweek yes, game we're going into? Yes, because yes. they had um, Al-Ali on Saturday. Yeah. And they last played that week with Al-Ali on Saturday. Yeah. 
And I think they could have at least put in a game on Wednesday or, you know, at earliest on Tuesday. Because mm. when you, you thrash the team 5-0, right, at that relative ease, I think the boys, you know, can come in again two days later yeah, and, and do play, the job. Yeah. right, because they didn't really have to sweat that hard. And I think they should have played in that midweek. Mm. And now you're looking at a, a fixture crunch now because, you know, it's getting to that stage where it's serious now. It's the semifinals. Yeah. So Piso cannot afford to rest any players. Absolutely You've got the semifinals not. and the yeah. league to play for. But I think if they had played a midweek game, it would have just sort of, you know, um, taken a load off them a little bit. Mm. And it would have been two games as opposed to three. Yeah. Because now obviously they're still, you know, waiting that outcome uh, with um, RNC situation. So... I think that fixture crunch is going to work against Sundowns now. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, because I mean, they, they could possibly be playing for two weeks straight. They could be possibly playing two week, uh, two games um, in a week. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so that, that's that's just I guess that's just the case that they find themselves in. Uh, but I mean, th- here's here's a, a comment that has been doing the rounds. Um, as far as Mamelodi Sundowns are concerned, if they had to at this stage of the season, then decide. Listen, we can't go for both. We've got the squad, yes, we can do it, but for 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 the sake of, I guess, just directing our challenge uh, uh, into one sort of direction, we can't go for both. Do you feel that the the, the league would be the one that they sacrifice? Um, you know, what? I I think at this stage of the season, um, you you have to kind of go for both. Mm. To be honest with you, I I don't think. You can sacrifice one or the other because you know the the CAF Champions League. There's you're three games away. Yeah. Right. Three games away from you know South African football immortality. Mm. Okay. Being the only team in South Africa with two stars. Yeah. And then you go back and you 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 look at the Premier League. You know. You're also three games away. Well, those are the three games in hand, but mm. I think they're five games away, right? Six, mm. six games away. So they still got plenty still got to play for. Games away. So you're six yeah. games away from also etching yourself as possibly the, be- the, mm. the best, you know, team in the land mm. in terms of league titles. So when you have history on on, on either side. You know, you, I, I don't see how you can say, okay, look, I'm going to focus on this and not focus on that. It reminds me of when I go to dinner, mm. right? If I know there's a good dessert in there, <laughs> right? But I know at the same time, man, the buffet is also quite good. I'm not going to save myself for the dessert. I'm going to enjoy the buffet. And, and if I have dessert. to stuff down the, the dessert, I'm going to stuff it down. <laughs> but it is going to go down. That's where Sundowns find themselves. Mm. I don't think they can actually say, you know what, we might save ourselves for the league because the the Champions League is more important. Why not get the the cup double? The the league and uh, the Champions League double. Why not get the cup double? not impressed with your analogy. He's just not impressed at all. Imika, but where do you stand in that whole picture, though? Uh, Mamelodi Sundowns, if you're Mamelodi Sundowns management right now, uh, again, Ola mentions you've got history on both sides of of, of the coin. Uh, do, do you go for both? Well, look, I have, uh, you know, first of all, to, to the dessert and and <laughs> and buffet um, issue, it's like going to there's that that restaurant called Carnival where you just eat. As much on, until you're yes, tired. Yes, yeah. yes, I love carnival. <laughs> yes, so so that's not an option. <laughs> Sundowns has got to make it make a call, and they probably can win both. Mm. But if they really want to win the the, the Cup Champions League, it's going to be very difficult because of the number of weeks that are left and and you know uh, what they need, how they need to concentrate to to because do it in Africa now you're up against the really really formidable teams mm. yes they did well to get rid of Alali but uh, everybody else that is left there including you know you know some of those real, real powerhouse teams you there's no easy games mm. on, on either side of the um, they've got to try and, and take what they can. They, they've got a, a big squad. Yeah. It's how they're able to, to balance out what they need. Because the biggest problem when you're playing playing twice a week is um, you play weekend and midweek. And, and that's what, how it's going to be for them over the next couple of weeks. Mm. So it's going to be um, very difficult for them to get full recovery uh, before before any other game. And that's, so can that's I, the tricky can side I of it. raise yeah. a point? Right. You then wonder if yes. um, the PSL has possibly done sundowns and Bafana Bafana a disservice here. 
right, in terms of the fixtures. Because I alluded to the fact that Sundowns should have played a, mid, a midweek game mm. this past week, yeah. right? And I now look at the fact that we had five Sundowns players in that game against Libya, mm. right? And Sundowns, you know, still have league games to play, six of them, mm. right? Possibly three more games of the AFCON. I'm uh, sorry, of, uh, of CAF um, mm. Champions League. And then straight after that is AFCON. Yes, uh, so you wonder if, you know, those players will not be tired mm. getting to AFCON. Because, I mean, there's no way some of those players should not be on the starting lineup yeah. for Sundowns. It, 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 it's so a, it's a you, point. you then think, you know, how is um, a month, a month Baxter going to handle? The end of, between the, there's a month between between the the Netbank Cup final and mm. and Afcon and to my to my to best of my knowledge, sometimes I'm not playing the Netbank Cup final, mm. so they will definitely be, be done with with the league, and it will just be the, the Craft Champions League. I think that that they will manage, and I think also the players um, know that the you know playing for Bafana at mm. Afcon won't be a, a problem. The thing is just but, but then, uh, that they, they they may not have enough time before the next season starts, which is what I think, uh, I think really that's, really yeah. I think I think maybe that's that's maybe what Ola yeah. is alluding to as well because if, again if you're looking at Sundowns for the last three four years they've been playing non-stop football. Yeah, you see the you other know. thing uh, I I get it Amika there's a month you know in that break or mm. I think it's three and a half weeks somewhere there right, but in that break Stuart Baxter is going to be you know putting the guys to their straps. He's not yeah. going to be okay let's relax players, you know you just guys, uh, yeah. two yeah. touch in the circle. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's going to actually making these guys work for their positions. Mm. So I wonder. And, you know, you, you look at it in the Sundowns context, you know, do the guys rock up to camp, you know, not sort of like match sharp in terms mm. of just the speed of the play. They have to, you know, build relationships with other players because mm. it doesn't mean that Stuart Baxter is going to be playing the same team that he played in the um, in the qualifying. Yeah. So, you know, will Stuart Baxter have time to try out the combinations? Will, you know, he have time to see where he can make some of those Sundowns plays? Mm. Because, look, they will need a rest. They definitely will need a rest. And, and you know, it, it, it's a point that uh, Gavin Hunt actually alluded to in in, in that win against Chipper United uh, last Friday. Uh, he was just he was like, well, you know what? I finally have all my Bafana defenders back because either yeah. through maybe a niggle here or maybe he just felt he had to rest some of them. You know, he couldn't immediately get them back and straight into the system, uh, even in this crucial stage of the season where they're trying to. And uh, Afcon is longer this year, yeah. so you know yeah. who knows if Bafana do go on a. On a, a good run, mm. so I think it is an interesting thing that maybe in hindsight, you know, people didn't foresee that this could happen in terms of the fixture pileup mm. of the team that is gunning for the league, Champions League, and has a good number of Bafana players, mm. you know, within their setup. So I just wonder if you know that you know could possibly cause a problem as far as Bafana Bafana goes in we terms of we, trying we to set we, up we, we can't complain Kola, Kola because we, we can't complain we can't complain because because um, we didn't even know if Bafana was going to qualify now they've qualified wow. now we're complaining about players wow. not being, Imika, really? being there I, I think I think we need yes a few weeks ago a few, a few weeks ago you guys were saying how Bafana couldn't afford it to, to go and draw the game to get to the to the, to the tournament. Now they're yeah. there. You're complaining about players playing. <laughs> the Sundowns players, they are playing in Africa. is good for Bafana because it yeah. gives them more and more experience and more confidence. So let's let's see what 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 happens at the end of the season. Mm. Maybe Sundowns get knocked out early. Uh, you don't know, but you know we're, we're just speculating and assuming that they're going to get to the finals. You don't know if they're going to get there or not. Well, I mean, I well, you, you can't beat an early five nil and not be a contender <laughs> to get to the final, uh, uh, Mika. Well, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you might just call your goals in that one game. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we do know, Ibuka, is that uh, it is uh, wider Casablanca that lie ahead from Amino de Sundowns in the semi finals. And they've dealt with them they've before. They've dealt with them before. They've beaten them before. Uh, on the other side of that draw is Esperanza defending champions and TP Mazembe, teams that Sundowns have played against as well over the last three or four years. So, again, there's no reason to not assume that Sundowns could make it through the, to the final. If they play the way that they have been playing in in, in in the knockouts, they certainly have a very good chance of getting there. I, I, have, I haven't I haven't said so. I I I really would love to see Sundowns win win yeah. another uh, title because if they do, then it it will help shake up this mentality in South Africa mm. about um, not wanting to take, take African competitions seriously. And I hope Kaza Chiefs actually do wake up to the reality that uh, let's not talk to, about to that be team. to be to be a big 
to be to be a big player, you, you know, you've got to be uh, competing against the best in Africa. So uh, we've and seen not, Paris and not fighting for a top eight finish. Um, We've seen we've seen also uh, Super Sport United play in the final, so yeah. we want to see see um, uh, you know Bidvest and and Super Sport taking a lot more seriously, mm. so, yeah. and uh, Kaiser Chiefs taking a bit more seriously. We need to see those two. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, either way, for Mamelodi Sundowns, the month of April, well, what remains of it is just going to be so pivotal because after those three games that they play in about nine days and the first leg of uh, the uh, semi-finals, which they'll be playing away from home, um, it's going to be, by the time they go into May, they know exactly what the picture looks like if that history that we've touched on is uh, said to be theirs. But uh, speaking of history... Uh, that long wait uh, for Liverpool to be crowned or to be known as champions of England, that long generational wait, that long, long wait. I'm sure, Mika, your kids are like, Daddy, why <laughs> what do you is support Liverpool? Liverpool? Like, what they, is they, they probably don't understand where your fascination of Liverpool comes from. Because since they've been born, they've seen slips, they've seen chokes, well, they've seen well, literally nothing well, from Liverpool. Well. <laughs> what is a Liverpool, Daddy? <laughs> Emika, are you there? Uh, Emika's running away. That's what Emika's doing. But uh, look, well, uh, they, they, are, they are there. They are there. And after that, that victory over, over Chelsea uh, and the, the manner in which they got it, it was, was typical Liverpool. It was never going to be a, a game of small margins. They were either going to, you know, blow hot for a couple of minutes or, or, or cold for a couple of minutes as well. And they were cold for a while and Chelsea should have punished. But when they were on top, uh, Liverpool, they looked the part again. Just a friendly reminder. Man City have a game in hand. Yeah, we, we, we know. Okay, yeah. Man City have a game in hand. So, you know, I saw Klopp fist pumping, you know. Yeah, at um, the end there, he was, you know, he going, was absolutely and I, and I, going for I just it. couldn't help think that Klopp, City have a game in hand. <laughs> you blew a 10-point lead at Christmas, right? Just relax for a second, okay? And I think Liverpool fans, look, they've got every right to be optimistic because, I mean, you know, they... They're in this position because of the results that they've put in. And I, I guess the result against Chelsea, you know, uh, makes them believe even more. Mm. But I think right now, you know, it's really not even in their hands anymore. Mm. It's down to Man City's yeah. hands. Because Man City, you know, they still have to go to Old Trafford and they still have to play Spurs. Mm. So I think if you're a Liverpool fan right now, you know, you're just happy with your team's performance, but you are praying that Man City slip up because that's the only way I see yeah. Liverpool can win the title, given the fact mm. that, you know, they are um, ahead by a point and City have a game in hand. And the truth of the matter is, everyone is going on about how big this, 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 the Spurs and United games are for City. These are teams that they can beat on any given day. Yeah. And I, listen, I'm talking as a United fan, a diehard United fan, but City can, if they want in that game, beat United 3-0 and it's not going to be a thing. And I saw something, I, I saw something um, the other day where, you know, they were quizzing Man United fans yeah. and they said, should we let City win? so that Liverpool don't win the title. Yeah. And that's actually been like a, a talk amongst fans yeah. because obviously you've got your, your City rivals yeah. going for the title and you've got your bitter rivals yeah. in Liverpool going for the title. So what would you rather see more? <laughs> City win Neville. the title or Liverpool? So they were actually saying, yeah. you know, should we just give up the game Gary, Gary Neville, City? if I'm not mistaken, can make that comment as well, uh, that uh, oh, United okay. should actually rest players, uh, should rest their, 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 their regulars against City in that game, uh, sitting, you know, sitting next to Jamie Carragher and Carragher lost his mind. <laughs> He couldn't believe what he was saying because, again, look, as, as a, um, and I'm, I'm in no way associated with the city of Manchester. I've, I've never been there. I don't know, you know, the red from blue, which side is, you know what I mean? But as a United fan, I would easily let City win the league instead of Liverpool. Ooh. Any day, Imika. How is that sitting well with Any Amica? day. How is that going to sit well with day, I do not want Liverpool to win the league. I, you know what? I'm just going to be, well, I'm going to move well, out, out of my impartial even, seat for a while. Even even if even if even if Man City do beat United, mm. uh, they still have to beat Leicester and they still have to beat. Uh, but Tottenham. these are teams that they can beat oh. on any day if they want. Yes, they, yes, they can. They can. But Tottenham did beat them in the Champions League. Uh, okay, okay, Imika. <laughs> this is this is this is the typical Liverpool fan. That's what he's holding on to. That one of these two teams. 
you know, this is where Manchester City will slip up. And let's be honest, even if they do slip up against one of these two teams, but they win their game in hand, they'll still be, what, a point or two points ahead of you with have you, with the two teams having played the same number of games. Mm. So they'll still be ahead should they slip up against uh, either United or uh, Tottenham, Imika. But th- that is interesting, though, you know, and I'm saying this as a neutral, obviously as an Arsenal fan, is that when you look at it this way, right, I think should Liverpool win the league and Man- Manchester City win the Champions League, mm. I think that's going to blow Manchester United out of the English conversation for a very, very long time. Because if you're a Man United fan, honestly, you're caught between a rock and a hard place because, you know, you, you're looking at Liverpool who you overtook mm. and, you know, three years ago, if you, uh, five years ago, mm. right? It looked like Liverpool would never, ever, ever get back to Manchester United's level, ever. Yeah. And now you could have a situation where Manchester United look like they're probably five years away from getting to Liverpool's level. Mm. So Manchester City have obviously come in as the noisy neighbours. They are rewriting their own history, yeah. their, their modern day history. And part of that modern day history is winning league titles mm. when Man United is not. So it's actually interesting if you're a Man United fan that, you know, who do you actually want to see win the league? Because mm. either way, if Man United win, if Manchester City win the league, right, those are your rivals and they're taking, what, they would have taken two league titles since you won your last one. And you're looking at Liverpool who, you know, obviously as bitter rivals, you don't I want them to win. I do not want period. them to get to 19. 18 is, should, is the last that they should ever see. I do not want you guys to win the league, Imika. That's just me. That's just me. Well, sorry for you. Um, <laughs> you know, there's this saying, uh, whatever it will be, will be. Yeah. So let's, let's you know, uh, for me, I, I want to take it one game at a time, but I know that, you know, like I said earlier, if, if, if Man City do, do win those two games, then, you know, they deserve to be champions. Okay, all right. Uh, but I mean, if, if, if we are to talk about your team a bit more, Imika, uh, this win over Chelsea, I mean, it, 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 it took a lot out of the team and you could see maybe from the celebrations at the end. Uh, but, you know, it, it does, it, does it re, reaffirm you as a Liverpool fan that you guys do have the mentality uh, uh, to go on? You've got that, that, that drive to go on and actually be crown champions because I can imagine that between now and the end of the season, there'll be one or two other games where you're going to need to, to, to dig deep. I mean, Liverpool has only lost one game this season. That's, that, that will tell you um, how formidable That's they've been this season. And they've also... Yes, and they've, and they've also... Um, you know they have a plus 57 goal difference, mm. which is which is uh, you know unbelievable. You know because usually they consider a lot of goals. Mm. Um, you know they 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 have the least they consider the least number of goals, and I think maybe they've considered a bit more in the last few games, maybe from pressure. But you know they, they did well earlier in the season to not consider a lot of goals. Yeah, and you know we've seen um, situations where you know some players have come in and stepped up their game. I mean. The coach was bold enough to play without without Matip and brought, brought back Lovren in the Champions League, and he did, he did pretty well. <laughs> Nabi Keita uh, scoring goals now. <laughs> and yeah, and then, and then suddenly Nabi Keita seems to be. We're seeing you know moments of his brilliance coming mm. back, uh, you know, you know to the to the team. So it's it's um, it, you know the, the difference between the Liverpool team of twenty fourteen um, that, that 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 not only won uh, lost the league. And then the team also that lost the Champions League mm. is that they have a lot more depth. Mm. You know, there's a lot more depth. In, you know, uh, even if one of those front three gets gets out, he's shown that you know he can bring in Origi, bring in Shakiri, bring in a few guys, tweak it a bit, and they still somehow manage to get get some kind of results. So what they've achieved in the last few games that they've won, where they've come from behind, um, that's typical Liverpool. They would have lost those games, but mm. uh, we've seen. A certain kind of resurgence in the overall, um, in overall play mm. uh, and confidence that, that we've seen, and then all this talk about um, you know trying to depend on Salah. Salah's continue to produce uh, some moment of magic. Maybe not the heights of last season, but you see the influence from the Tottenham game 
out of the last two games, he suddenly, you know, become like a different player well, altogether. I mean, he's going to care. Has had a, a he's going to care very little about these comparisons between last season and this season if Liverpool go on to win the title because, you know, he would have actually won Absolute, the title. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, because beyond even his his, his goal scoring, mm. you know, Mane has stepped up with, with a bit more goals when when uh, you know no one was that's, expecting. That's my him. Liverpool Everyone player is looking this at Salah. I and think, then, I think, and yeah, I think so as well. Mm. And, and and then also, uh, Kola is always on, on uh, about Firmino. Firmino's numbers this season is also <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Uh, Roberto Firmino. <laughs> well, before we close, I have to I have to ask you this, uh, 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 Imika. Uh, you're running. You've got Cardiff. You've got Huddersfield. You've got Newcastle United, and then Wolves at home in finishing off the season. All games, all four of them, very much winnable. Uh, uh, do you think it, it, it is a uh, it is possible? And I want to get your your uh, opinion on this as well. Do you think it's possible that you guys actually win all four of these games? I think it's possible. Uh, the, the, the good thing is that it's not just the fans who who want them to win. I think the players do want do, themselves do want to win. Yeah. And you can see that in in the way they have responded to to the games. In fact, sometimes when, even when you think uh, you think about you think about it, you see that the players um, have come to a point where there's this realization uh, that look, we could be champions if we try and win our games. Even yeah. though they know that Man City seems like uh, sometimes almost incapable of dropping points, but mm. um, they have to, they have to first try and win their games. Yeah. And then you know, look look at where that leaves them because Man City, Man City is uh, uh, Man City's biggest challenge is that they they, they set their setup to try and win the Champions League. Mm. Uh, if they do crash out, then then it means that they they will have to focus on the Premier League, and that will mm. be a good thing for Liverpool. But if they win, then there's the extra incentive of having to play semi-finals, which puts added pressure on them mm. uh, in terms of Champions League. Liverpool do have the edge because. Uh, they, they they know how to play play in the Champions League, especially the two leg ties, mm. and and still play their league games. Uh, so it's for us as fans. I think it's it's um, very interesting. Um, maybe next two, three, three to four weeks will be yeah. probably the most interesting we've seen in a very long time. Because um, don't forget that there's still Barcelona in the Champions League. Mm. Okay, uh, Ecola. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa. You, can you get past um, Porto <laughs> first? <Hey. laughs> you know, <laughs> hold on there. Um, look, I, I think of those four games. I mean, Cardiff, Huddersfield. I think. I mean, Car- Huddersfield. Uh, by the time you play Cardiff, they could be relegated. So you mm. could have back-to-back relegated teams. Yeah. The Newcastle one is interesting because you've got Rafa there, and I think Rafa. If there's any team right now, apart from Man United, that Rafa would actually want to just stick it to them, <laughs> I think it's probably Liverpool. Pool. And I wouldn't no. be surprised Rafa, if Rafa, Rafa just uh, Rafa, you know Rafa tends to have a game Rafa plan. And, this is Rafa what? and and and, and Brendan Rodgers. They are two Liverpool managers that came closest to winning the league. They That's, would definitely want Liverpool. So to there's win. no but way there's they're no just going to make it easy for no, Rafa Benitez. I mean, He's for um, Jurgen Klopp, yeah. there's no way the Wolves game. I think will also be quite tricky because I mean Wolves have a phenomenal record against the top six mm. teams. So that could be a tricky one. But I think. I think um, Liverpool's destiny with the title really lies in Manchester's uh, Manchester City's run with that Tottenham mm. and Manchester United game. I mm. think those two games will decide the title for me. You know, even though Liverpool aren't playing those games, it's yeah. more Man City because you know, obviously, with that game in hand, and you know, if they slip up in those two games or one of those two games. I think Liverpool, you know, the, the momentum and the drive is just so big. It seems like the whole world wants Liverpool to win the title, and I think they're feeding off that. So, you know, they could possibly, you know, push through. This is the most entertaining team in the world right now. So, who wouldn't want them to win the title? Me? There's, I second that very quickly. <laughs> but, uh, Imika, in closing, a quick 30 seconds from you. Uh, on uh, just your reaction and your thoughts on Nigeria's uh, uh, draw at uh, the uh, Afcon 2019. I think they got a, they got a, a good draw. Uh, the problem with Nigeria and, and, and those kind of draws is that sometimes they get complacent. Uh, Nigeria and, and at the Afcon they do better when they have a, a tough group to navigate. Mm. And you know, I think if, if my memory serves me well, I think they've only ever failed to come out of the group stage. Um, that was 1982. And um, yeah, I think I think mostly that. that so so it will be. Um, I believe they should be to, to, to 
and I think they are, they, are, they they might also be one of the one of the really top contenders because if they keep the the momentum from the World Cup and and they've done so well um, in recent games, mm. um, maybe they they, they, they might if they come out of their group. They maybe might be able to uh, to mount a serious challenge because they've got quality and if Igalo is just scoring, then uh, then you know, the good. coach doesn't allow allow Chukwueze to go go playing around with uh, with junior teams rather than. With the super egos, then they, they, they do stand a chance because there's, there's a lot enough quality in that team. Okay, all right. Let's not forget that they are only coming back for the first time in three editions. So, um, good luck to the super egos. And uh, again, well, then, it was, it was <laughs> I knew same, you had a comment for that. It's the same thing in, 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 tw- in 2013, they came back, they, they, they missed out in 2012, and they came back and, and won it in South Africa. So, don't be surprised. Ah, but I mean, South Africa is home for them anyway, so it's okay. It it, it wasn't yes. like it wasn't. <laughs> <for admission. laughs> Ibika, thank you very much for joining us. So you have a good week thank further. You. We'll speak to you uh, next week, uh, Mr. Magwaza. Uh, thank you for your time as well and uh, eating right in front of thank me. Thank you uh, <laughs> and enjoy. Enjoy the drama. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, Ibika. Hola. Yep, in closing, I just want to say that Arsenal guys are doing a serious, serious, serious job at getting back into that top four. And I'm telling you now, we're going to finish third. Mark my words. I'm sure, I think, I think you, you, are, you just want to say Watford are doing you guys a serious, serious favor in doing, in doing exactly that. But uh, as for United fans, we've got, we've got some, some uh, difficult, difficult uh, couple of hours uh, to come, but we'll touch on that and a bit more next time on Pitch Invasion. From myself, Loazis Kubu. Hola, Makwaza. And Dimika, all the way, wherever he is, it's goodbye. <laughs>